नमस्ते एंड वेलकम लिमिटेड लायबिलिटी पार्टनरशिप इज ए प्रिफर्ड बिजनेस व्हीकल ऑफ स्टार्टअप्स एसएमईस एंड टेक्नोक्रेट्स इट हैज इवॉल्व्ड टू ब्रिज द गैप बिटवीन पार्टनरशिप ऑन द वन हैंड एंड लिमिटेड लायबिलिटी कंपनी ऑन द अदर इट ऑफर्स the best of both worlds namely flexibility of operation from partnership and protection of limited liability from the limited liability company worth noting that as for india it is an idea for the 21st century and it has proved to be a wonderful gain for all of us now let us study the key parameters in the life cycle of an llp as seen from the provisions of limited liability partnership act 2008 let's find convincing answers to certain frequently asked questions such as what is an llp how it is formed what are the rights and liabilities of a partner what are the audit and accounts requirements in an llp can we convert existing partnership firms and limited liability companies into llps and also what is the process of dissolution of an llp let us get into the details now let's get into the meaning and features of an llp it's a hybrid between company and partnership it has a benefit of separate legal entity and flexibility of partnership it is shielded the partners from the risk of unlimited personal liability the llp act as such mainly provides for the mutual rights of llp and partners how an llp could be formed and also how we could convert a partnership or a private company or an unlisted public company into a llp an llp has to have at least two members and the members could be individuals an llp registered under the act and also a company with limited liability a cooperative society or any other body corporate cannot be admitted as members of an llp what happens if the number of members falls below 2 the company has to get the membership raised to 2 and above within a period of 6 months failing which the member who carries on business during the period will attract personal liability llp act also specifies about designated partners designated partners are just like compliance officers in a regular company they should be individuals there should be a minimum of two designated partners if for any reason the number of designated partners comes down below 2 every member is treated as a designated partner 
where the members are corporates or llps they can nominate individuals as designated partners only requirement in respect of a designated partner is that he should have stayed within the country for a minimum of 182 days during the previous year the designated partner is a role similar to a compliance officer for all penalties for all filings for all returns for all statements for all service of processes and summons he is the responsible officer of the llp a designated partner needs to file his consent as well as particulars about himself in the respective forms and any changes therein over a period of time needs to be updated and filed it is a very very responsible position in a company the act also deals with foreign llps it refers to those llps which are incorporated outside india but have a place of business within india they have to ensure that all their correspondences from the indian business entity carry in all their invoices and other correspondence very legibly stating that they are branch of a foreign llp and they will carry both the local office address and also the address of the foreign llp we have to see what is the process involved in incorporating an llp in india being a via media between partnership and a limited liability company it has got so many features which are quite visible in the process of formation of a company in india say reservation of name and getting the name available from the registrar and incorporate the company using one of the names that are cleared within a period of 3 months of reservation when once you get the name then you make a document of incorporation which is signed by two or more subscribers who are subscribers to the document of incorporation with their name their partners what is the capital what is the nature of business need to pay the capital based fee and the registrar will issue the certificate of incorporation along with a llp identity number llp in and the certificate of incorporation will definitely mention the registered office which is the address for all communication certificate of incorporation is a conclusive document which entitles the company to acquire a separate legal entity capable of uh, suing and being sued acquire property and use a common seal and the entity comes into being there is a provision for the llp to effect change of name and also change of registered office change of name may happen at the instance of the partners who want to have change of name for the sake of showing the real character or real business of the organization or 
it may be at the instance of the central government which finds something not proper in terms of its resemblance with some other popular brands or its association with something else than what it is doing uh, to put it the other way to make the name sound more familiar with the business and the group that runs the business we might need a change of name similarly for the sake of business convenience an llp is allowed to shift its location within the place of a registrar or between the jurisdiction of two registrars or between two states also uh, the process will have a little bit of more formalities when it involves creditors on either side consent of the creditors of course and the consent of the partners is essential and there is a specific procedure of announcement and advertising in the official gazette before the transfer takes place this process of incorporation brings the llp into being and it gets going operating its businesses partners will have an agreement between themselves and all their rights and liabilities flow from the agreement but one thing to remember there is a schedule called first schedule which is applicable to the rights and liabilities of partners whenever the agreement doesn't provide for a specific detail schedule 1 or the first schedule applies however if the agreement makes a specific mention of a particular thing which is not contrary to the spirit of llp the first schedule doesn't come into picture now when does a partner cease to be it will be as per the agreement it might also be with the demise of the partner or maybe at the dissolution of the llp or if that concerned partner has applied to the court for insolvency or there is a, a decision by a court of original jurisdiction on the unsound mind of a partner in these cases he ceases to be a partner and a, a partner who has ceased as such is entitled to a settlement it is just like a partner's capital and current account being settled with the capital balance accumulated profits and also accumulated losses as on date of the settlement taking into account profit or loss till the date as we have seen in case of incorporation documents partners will have their name and address filed with the registrar of companies any change therein or any change in the location of the llp or any change in the composition of partners or their business all these things need to be filed with the registrar within a month and the beautiful part of llp is partners are not agents of other partners they are agents of the llp and llp is liable for all their acts which are reasonable not negligent and are prudent 
it will be all at the liability of the LLP. However, if there is a wrongful act, an authorized act or an act to defraud the creditors against the spirit of LLP, the partner will be personally liable and partner's liability to contribute also depends upon the limited liability partnership agreement. That way, the liability and rights of partners are basically governed by the LLC agreement between the partners. An LLP to facilitate processing of periodical statements is required to maintain books and accounts as prescribed. It has to be maintained for each year in respect of all its receipts and expenditures, income and outgoes, assets and liabilities. The books and accounts are required to be preserved for a minimum of eight years after the year end. Now from the books of accounts, it is required to prepare a statement of account and solvency to be filed with the registrar within 30 days after the expiry of six months from year end. And this particular statement of account and solvency is available for public inspection. And an LLP having been a hybrid of partnership and limited liability company has got stricter audit provisions. Audit is mandatory where the turnover is more than 40 lakhs or the contribution is more than 25 lakhs. The auditor needs to be appointed before 30 days of year end. His appointment, renewal, resignation and other provisions are all as per the LLP agreement or subject to the consent of all partners. The designated partner is required to file an annual return every year and such return needs to be certified by a practicing company secretary where the turnover is more than 5 crores or the contribution is more than 50 lakhs. Needless to say, annual return is an important document which is available for public inspection. The LLP Act requires that the records are preserved for specific period of time depending on the prioritization. All documents relating to incorporation, LLP agreement and notice of situation are permanent document ever available. Any documents pertaining to liquidation of accounts or liquidation accounts shall be preserved for 21 years. Other documents, the preservation period varies between 5 and 3 years. As regards accounts and audit and other records maintained by the company, registrar has got very wide powers. He has got the power to issue processes, summon people and seek details and reports from partners, designated partners and employees both past and present. He can summon them and hold an inquiry and he has got the right to penalize for any failure on the part of those who have been summoned or who have been asked to furnish details. Uh, the LLP Act provides for three forms of conversion. 
a firm which is existing can be converted into an LLP and a private limited company can convert itself into an LLP and a company which is not listed though it is a public company it is not listed on any recognized stock exchanges it can be converted into an LLP the process is bringing the old entity into the LLP agreement to be formed for each of these but we will find one particular specific restriction here which says the number of shareholders prior to conversion and the number of shareholders after conversion they shall remain the same the whole logic being the structure of LLP should not be allowed to be misused for people to get into the template of LLP by finding out lacunae in the legal provisions. When an existing firm or private limited company or an unlisted company is converted into LLP, the LLP, after having done all the procedural requirement, needs to inform the ROC in 15 days. The ROC will ensure that the LLP is taken on record and the erstwhile entity is dissolved or removed from the register of firms or companies. But what happens to its assets and liabilities? They all get accommodated on the books of the new LLP. What about the ongoing litigations, convictions, penalties, court decisions, arbitrations? They remain as it is, only the party moves from the erstwhile entity into the latest LLP. And there is also a requirement when once an LLP is formed through conversion, its all correspondence for 12 months from the date of commencement or from the date of issue of certificate of registration under conversion shall mention specific wordings that converted into LNP from this particular firm or company and old registration number. Therefore, two sets will be mentioned in all documents, old name of the company and new name of the company, old registration number, new registration number, highlighting this is a converted entity. LLP could be wound up. It may be due to the decision of the partners or it may also arise due to the inability of the company to continue as a going concern. In either case, the procedure is almost aiming at liquidating the assets and liabilities of the company, ensuring the secured and unsecured creditors are procedurally paid and whatever liability due from the partners is collected and proper documentation on the closure of the firm and dissolution of the entity followed by a gazette notification is done in either case. In both dissolution procedures, what is ensured is that there is a provision for hearing the complaints of the aggrieved. The aggrieved may be a creditor, the aggrieved may be a partner or a designated partner. They will be heard by the tribunal or by the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal subject to the appeal being filed within 45 days of the decision of the tribunal. What we find in the course of winding up is the liquidator 
who is the key person is either appointed by the partners or they are appointed by the tribunal but they are under close watch their functions remain the same the whole function is to ensure that there is a proper reporting there is proper disposal of assets at their best possible value and the protection of interests of all starting from creditors to unsecured creditors and to partners and transparency and absence of personal gains thanks for your time please feel free to express yourself with your likes or dislikes thanks once again